In today's episode of The Insect Hunter, I'm going to teach you how to collect insects at flowers, so let's see what kind of treasures we can find today. Insects are often attracted to flowers because they're a great food source. Many scientists believe that because insects are so connected to flowers, that that is one of the reasons why they are so successful and there's so many different types here on the earth today. First off, let's talk about how you collect insects at flowers. One of the ways you can do it is by using your hands. And one of the key things you're gonna do when you're collecting insects at flowers is you're going to use stealth as much as possible and as you'll see in this video when I try to collect insects I try to move my hands in as slowly and without any jerking movements as possible so that the insects don't get scared. One of the benefits of having insects at flowers is that they're often distracted. So this hoverfly here that I'm grabbing I know that it's not a bee just because the way that its head looks, its eyes one of the problems with using your hands is that when you collect butterflies or moths or things like that, you can rub off their scales. So this is not always recommended and it can be dangerous or harmful to you if you're trying to catch bees or other things. So the best way to collect insects at flowers that's easy is by using a glass jar and you want to have a lid. Again, you're going to use stealth. You're going to move in that jar slowly and uh, get that over the insect and throw that lid on as fast as you can. And you can kind of shake the jar and usually the insects will tend to fly up to the top. You do need the lid so that they don't fly out the bottom because some insects will do that. And using a jar will protect insects like butterflies and others so they're not getting handled with your hands or getting damaged. So they're much more likely to be taken care of well in this way. Another awesome thing about using jars when you're collecting insects and flowers is that you can just put them straight in the freezer or admire them um, and show them off to other folks before you release them again. So now we get to get into my favorite part and take a look at all the awesome insects we were able to collect using this technique. One of the first insects I wanted to show you was this paper wasp. I caught tons of them. They're super common. Um, it's kind of cool to watch these insects in the jar and how they fly. This is the same type of wasp that fought with the mantis bit in the video I just released a couple weeks ago. Here's a honeybee I'm going after and I really want to emphasize with these bees that you should only keep what you need. I mean these things are very important pollinators so if you're doing an insect collection I would only keep one or two if you're still learning how to pin. So this bee in the jar didn't really want to leave so I kind of shook it up a little bit and then look here as it finally comes out. It's almost like something off of a movie, like some 3D animation. The bee flies right in front of the camera and then flies off, so I thought that was kind of funny. This other honeybee was just really cute and cuddly, this shot that I got of him. I just wanted to hold him and pick him up, but that's probably not a good idea, so I didn't. So when people think of flies, they most often think of rotting flesh or feces or other things like that, but a lot of flies actually will feed on pollen just like the hoverfly that I showed you earlier, but flies will take advantage of pollen as well. So this small bee could have possibly been a sweat bee or something like that, but um, it just reminded me, you know, that there are all shapes and sizes of pollinators out there because there's different types of flowers and some of the flowers are only accessible by smaller bees. Speaking of all shapes and sizes of bees, here we have a bumblebee, which is much larger and it's got this cool orange, yellow, and black colors. As you can see, it's just very pretty. I love the colors, and I love the hairs on bees, and that's one of the reasons why we don't store them in alcohol is because if that gets in alcohol, it will all kind of look like they've had a bad hair day or something. So that's why we preserve these ones either in the freezer or use airborne chemicals that kill them so that we're not actually getting them wet. So while I was out, I was able to find a couple different butterflies, which are not the easiest to collect. They're very skittish and easily scared away. But this small orange butterfly I was able to catch and I thought it was pretty. It was a very small one. And then I let it go on its way to continue pollinating. I would say the same thing with the butterflies as I did with the bees. It's important to let them go unless you're actually going to be keeping them for some reason. This butterfly had a pretty light yellow color on it and 
This is one of the awesome things about jars is that it's not going to damage these wings like nets would. I've caught a lot of butterflies, but almost always when I catch them in nets, their wings are often damaged or have some problems. And that's not going to happen with every type of net, but just with the type of net that you see me use on this channel the most is not the best. So using a jar for them is great. So while I was collecting, I spotted this huge bumblebee and I'm going to try and get closer and see if I can grab it real quick here. So look at this thing. This thing is bigger than my thumbnail. It's making me kind of nervous just seeing it in this jar. It's just giving me this nervous feeling because my body is saying this would hurt if it stung you. I wanted to, uh, after I was able to actually catch it in the jar, I wanted to get a closer look at it and just see it up close so you can see how big it is. I've got the jar opened up now, just looking in here at it. It's holding pretty still right now. Oh man, that scared me. I was just barely able to get that jar back on, so. What I'm about to do might be a really stupid idea, but I wanna see how big it is and I want you guys to see it too. One of the things about insects is that people actually think that they're really dirty, but they actually clean themselves a lot, which is kind of interesting. Awesome. What an awesome group of insects we were able to find today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, like, subscribe, and leave me a comment below. I love to hear from my viewers. And stay tuned next time for all things insects.